got damn hoops. LeBron's gonna hate this. Hate what? There is good reason to believe the biggest disaster in the NBA will be the Los Angeles Lakers. Why? JJ Reddick? Because Intuit Dome is opening right down the street. Oh, yes, sir. Keep up with the Clippers. The Lakers Arena, Crypto.com, is getting improvements. Great! Until you look at their preseason schedule. Start with two games in Palm Springs, over 100 miles from L.A. Then in Milwaukee, before another home game in Las Vegas. Then a rare preseason back-to-back, -back, Phoenix to Golden State. So the Lakers will be on the road two straight weeks. That's nothing new. That's nothing new. For a nasty regular season. The Lakers start with six teams. Is it? Because they always play the games like that uh, uh, in California, but not at the crypto. Who made the playoffs or the play-in. So counting preseason, 11 of 14 games on the road against tough competition. A disaster. Oh, wait, they're a veteran group? Yeah, but their best vets, LeBron and AD, just gave their all in Paris at the Olympics. Think they need a break? And the entire coaching staff is brand new. I'm talking from the lead assistant down to the newest intern. Oh, and the head coach has never done this before. The Lakers could be cooked before the season starts. But if that happens, will they make oh, a- Oh, man, Bron Bron's not going to allow that. Trade to save the team. He's going to have some extra motivation. Bronny going to be there. Who is even a realistic target? Because right now, the Lakers have assets to make a major deal. They have two valuable draft picks, the 2029 and 2031 first. Young players like Dalton Connect, Jalen Huchifino, and Max Christie. Young vets like D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt, and Jackson Hayes, and other contracts like Gabe Vincent, Christian Wood. The only untouchables LeBron are LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Bronny. and Bronny James. And I know, it is dumb <laughs> that the 17th pick good shooter Dalton Connect is tradable, but the 55th pick isn't? But I have to say this about LeGM's son. But I have been having a lot of luck. At Patrick Mahomes free score and up to a thousand percent ups in bonus cash. Zach Lowe from ESPN says they will 100% play Brawny game one of the season, yep. which is smart. Get the circus out of the way. You know ESPN will be non-stop Bronny for weeks, and Braun is distracted yep. by this. He admitted on a just podcast. Like, just like uh, 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 Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith getting mad at uh, Caitlin Clark not being on Team USA. Only the first time recently me and Bronny were on the floor as professionals training, and there were a couple of moments where I kind of lost focus. You know, I'm not used to losing focus when I'm out there on the floor. Get this over with. Rip the band-aid off and let them have their little moment. The actual focus should be on improving the team. So we have to look at who they can trade for because uh, it's obvious. The Lakers brought back their entire team from last year. So unless J.J. Riddick really is the next Pat Riley like L.A. wants us to believe, the same issues need to be fixed. But it's obvious, right? Why wouldn't they trade to help LeBron and A.D.? They just proved in Paris, LA's got two of the best American players alive. The top four at the Olympics were LeBron, Steph KD, and Anthony Davis. How do you not build around that? Are they the best big two in the NBA? I think most people- Yeah, AD was balling in the Olympics, bro. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because they just won a title. Then LeBron and AD. Number three, Jokic and Murray. Joker's still the best player in the world. Four, Luka and Kyrie. Five, Joel Embiid and either Tyrese Maxey or Paul George. But there's a really good chance the Lakers don't make a big trade this year. I know that sounds crazy, but the signs are there. I didn't For do it last year, that's two years. The Lakers have been in win-now mode and not made a big trade. Why? They are still burned by the Russell Westbrook. Hey, 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 hey. I got D'Lo and uh, 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 Vanderbilt out of it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I got D'Lo, Vanderbilt, and uh, Malik Beasy, but... But he can't like he can't make a shot. Whoop de doo! That's has nothing to do with Russ. That's has nothing to do with Russ, okay? Stop it. Stop it. First y'all complain Kuzma's bad. Then y'all what y'all do? Y'all traded Kuzma to watch it for us. Now you complain Russ is bad. What y'all do now? Now you complain D-Lo's bad. Y'all can't be satisfied. Deal three years ago. They overreacted to a first round loss and broke up a championship team, including Alex Caruso and Contavious Call. Y'all got Austin Reeves now. Well, Pope. Now oh, Pope. Oh well. Pope, he left the Nuggets too. So, oh, where? Whoop-de-doo! He played for the Magic now. Now, the front office has been so cautious 
they have held out on major trades, which includes getting Kyrie Irving two years ago when they had the chance. But now the new CBA rules make it impossible. Under the old CBA, you could spend a ton of money and it would hurt financially, but then they realized, yeah, that doesn't matter to a guy like Steve Ballmer who's got $30 billion. We gotta hit him where it hurts, the roster. So now, if you make one bad mistake, it kills your franchise. You can't make trades, you can't sign buyout players or use a mid-level exception. So teams are scared. It's why Clay is now a Maverick, KCP is in Orlando, and Paul George is in Philly. That is how afraid NBA teams are. So if the season starts slow, are the Lakers gonna panic? No way. They will say, this isn't even worth saving. We aren't even a 500 team. No one can save us. So sorry, LeBron. We drafted your son, hired your podcast buddy as coach. We're gonna draw the line at a stupid trade. And the GM is gonna be so upset halfway through the year. That the yeah, yes, that's the thing. He's the GM, the GM. He's the GM, bro. He's gonna make the trades. He's gonna make the trades. Trade for like Zach Levine or some dumb crap. He's gonna be sending out passive aggressive tweets. He's gonna be showing up in other teams' colors. Cause you know, he's a free agent next summer. Oh, he can leave and he will threaten to, but the front office is gonna Mr. say, knew. yo, we suck. The start of the season was terrible. You guys are tired and old. We're not gonna make some desperate panic move just to make LeBron happy. Get ready, that is where we are headed. But then what happens to JJ Redick? They got 20 head that, coaches, well, dang. Sorry I had like 15. Him. I mean, he makes millions of dollars. He knew what he was getting into, but like, remember Steve Nash? Like, so respected as a player. Play the Nets, that's right. That's right, that's Steve Nets, did coach the Nets, that's right. Stock as a head coach, it definitely dinged his legacy. And uh, I know Shaq doesn't believe in old JJ. You know, as a coach, it's all about respect. And, you know, if, if I'm a guy that's played seven, eight years and I'm getting a young coach who I think I was a better player than, this is going to be a level of, you know, disrespect. So imagine you come in and fucking <laughs> JJ Reddick starts yelling at you. It's going to be a fucking fight in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know, he ain't going to be yelling at LeBron. That's right. No one's going to be yelling at LeBron. He ain't going to be yelling at LeBron. Players ain't going to. Yeah, I'll have you right back on that podcast, buddy. That's why I hired you. You did it good on my podcast. I'll have you right back on podcast time right now. JJ Reddick starts yelling at you. It's going to be a <laughs> oh, I, I heard, I saw like a highlight from this interview too when he was on Pat McAfee. He said, Dave Shaq said, you know what they call me? They call me Shaq Blackafee. <laughs> what the hell? Yelling and all that, <laughs> screaming and all that extra running. Next Pat Riley by ass. Yeah, it would be hilarious if like JJ Reddick is yelling at Cam Reddish and Cam Reddish is like, who does this guy think he is? But let's just say hypothetically, they do the unthinkable and win games. LeBron and AD click. JJ has got. I him think JJ Reddick and LeBron are the same age. <laughs> <sighs> By Christmas, who could they trade for? Like I said, he started his career coaching career on Hall of Fame. Hopefully, it works out for him. Man, work out for Steve Nash. Well, hopefully, it works out for JJ Reddick. What do you do? Their main problem. Start on Hall of Fame difficulty. It's first time coaching. First time playing a game. You start on Hall of Fame difficulty. Best two guards are D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. Traffic cones on D. And their best defensive wing is Jared Vanderbilt. They got him from much still injured, grade. first of all, and gets played off the court offensively in big games. Their second need is a defensive big. Anthony Davis likes to play next to a center so that he can roam around the court. He did well with Bam Adebayo at the Olympics. So who is a realistic target? Well, the names that people throw around. Yeah, like now I think about it. Now that you said that, yeah, he did have Bam on the court with him. Uh, yeah, AD should be a power forward. Zach Levine, Jeremy Grant, Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, those would be a disaster. The more ideal trade targets start with Marcus Smart. One defensive player- Hell no, the Grizzlies ain't giving them up. Hell no, 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 no. And they healthy now, too. Grizzlies healthy now, too. No, 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 no. He ain't getting no Marcus Smart. Three seasons ago. Okay, not what he used to be, but a major upgrade over what LA has right now. His big problem is offense. Smart is a 32% three-point shooter, and LA needs triples, but if they could get him for the right price, it makes sense. Now, Memphis is not shopping Marcus Smart yeah, right no. now, but if they hit a roadblock, that could change. The next target is Bruce, Bruce Brown. Brown. The Raptors might be even more willing to sell low on him because he just had surgery. But Brown was key to the Nuggets title two years ago. He's a good defender and hit big shots in the postseason. Plus, 
he's a free agent and sure is not going to re-sign in Toronto. So they got to get something for him. And as far as big men go, I have heard Walker what? Kessler's name thrown out there. A perfect fit, except Danny Ainge knows that. And he's going to want to... Oh, yeah, Danny Ainge. You don't want to mess with Danny Ainge. <laughs> you don't want to mess with Danny Ainge. That's right. Oh, the Lakers. Uh, uh, Celtics legend Danny Ainge. He ain't on none of the Lakers. Fleece the Lakers for Walker Kessler. I'm talking every single pick, multiple good young players. Now, Kessler is an elite young center and part of Team USA's future, but the price is probably too high. Either way, I think the Lakers season is going to be a disaster. First round They're exit. going to make a trade. It will be painful. And Darvin Ham's going to be Darvin Ham's going to be uh, somewhere in this house laughing at them. Like Ben Simmons does every year at the 76ers when they lose in the playoffs. And if he doesn't go to a different team next year, like he's going to threaten to do, maybe he just retires. But the same goes for the Bucks. Giannis has threatened to leave. And Milwaukee he just honestly an is set up to lose this coming season. So I looked at the most Doc likely Rivers? place that Giannis lands next. And Doc don't got nothing cooked a up. team that nobody's talking about. What y'all think? Shout out to him who? 